this video, we will talk about Thought Farmer's sitemap and content audit reports. Now, these are two reports. Uh, they can be run by uh, administrators, but one of the two can also be run directly on the site by content editors or content champions. And both of these reports are really handy in making sure that your content on your internet stays up to date. Make sure that that content is relevant, it's updated regularly, it is not duplicated. Um, and besides from the, the content being fresh, another one of these reports, the sitemap report, can help you identify if the navigation structure of your internet is still uh, as clean as it can be and as straightforward as it can be so that your users are able to find what they need quickly and um, can make sure they get on with their day and use that content as they go. So there's two reports, like I said, we have a sitemap report and we have a content audit report. Both are similar, but both can also really focus on different things and help you make sure that your content and your navigation is really where it needs to be on the internet. Let's take a look at our sitemap report first. We're going to hop into our admin panel here. And under the content area is where we can access the sitemap report and the content audit report. The sitemap report is actually a report that you can run to show the structure and the content of your internet. So sometimes we refer to this as the information architecture, which is a fancy word for just the sitemap or the navigation structure that you have in place for all of the content on your internet. So with the sitemap report, you can right away, you can see here that it has uh, you have the option to have different scopes for this report, right? So either you do a sitemap report on the full site, which depending on how long you've had your internet or how much content is on there can be quite a meaty report, or you can do it for just uh, a limited section. So um, what I'm going to do here is uh, leave it to the full site. But if you wanted to maybe take a closer look at the structure of perhaps your department section or your knowledge base, you're able to fill out that section right here. And then now it's only going to give you information for all of the content that lives underneath that section. Like I said, though, for today, I will leave it to the full site number of levels to include this is really number of content levels so if you think about your navigation as a pyramid or a hierarchy your home page will be at the top your top level navigation right beneath it and then any content that branches out underneath there are all deeper levels of that navigation so you can set how many levels you want to include. Right for now, I'm going to leave it at three so that I can have a really high level overview of my internet. Leaving it at three levels deep is going to ensure the report is not going to become too, too big and it keeps it manageable for me. But if there is a specific section where you really want to drill deep, you can select all to go to, go to the deepest level of the navigation. <clears throat> You will see here as well that there are options to exclude different types of content. So by default, when you report, uh, when you run this report, um, content items like news posts or calendar events, uh, profile pages and files will not be included in the report. Um, the reasoning there is that they are usually, there's usually very many of them, uh, news posts and calendar events, and it might not be that relevant for the structure of your internet or the section you're looking at. So by default, they are excluded, but you can definitely just check those check boxes here if you do wish to include them in the report. Last but not least, data to include, right? So every time you run the sitemap report, it will always contain certain information about all the pages you're reporting on, uh, their title, a link to that page and the content type. Um, but there's other information that you can include as well, depending on what it is exactly you want to look at. So by default here, we have content activity and security checked off. Content activity will be information on when a page was first published uh, and updated, whether or not it has child pages and how many versions there are. 
security information really gives you for each page information on which people are the uh, are people that can view the page which people are editors and then who is the person who owns that specific page you can also include further information if you wish. So engagement metrics, for example, are really um, information on how people are interacting with a specific page, whether they like it or bookmark it, leave comments. By default, that's not included as it's not that relevant to the structure of your content, but you can definitely include it here if you really want to have the full picture. From here on out, I can um, I can export my report. What it's going to do is put all of this information into a Excel spreadsheet, and then it will send you an email in your inbox where you can download the spreadsheet directly. Now, I didn't want to go through that today with you all, so I already have pre-downloaded the report and I have put it into a Google spreadsheet here in this second tab. So this really is, as you can see, kind of like a 10,000 feet view of my information architecture for the PCU community site. Uh, again, information architecture or navigation structure. And that hierarchy that we talked about there is really what's reflected here in columns A, B, C, and D. Up to level three, uh, because that is what I selected in my parameters. If I went deeper, um, I would of course have additional columns here that show me pages that sit at the fourth, fifth, sixth, and so forth level. So from here on out, I can really take a closer look at how my content is structured. It is really laid out for me in an, in an easy to view way. I can see which branches are sitting under the branches section, um, where, where the department are sitting and so on. If I scroll over a little bit to the right here, you will see again that information that I pre-selected there. A page owner and the security permissions are uh, visible for every single, um, every single page here that is listed. And from here, of course, I can use the spreadsheet now to manipulate that data further uh, and uh, highlight some content that I think would maybe need to be altered. Maybe it needs to be moved in the navigation structure. Maybe it needs to be deleted or even reworked or renamed. So one that I highlighted here is a form, a knowledge base form that at this point sits at level two of the navigation. That means it is right there in that navigation top bar. Uh, and this may be one that I may want to move down into a very specific area, whether that is resources, for example, or um, one of the department sections. So you can work your way through that. <clears throat> Another thing that you can review in the sitemap report is really the content type. Right, so where does your content live? How is your navigation set up? But you can also look at the different content types that have been chosen for each page. For example, if I look at all of my department pages, there might be a page in here that accidentally wasn't set up as a group page, but was set up as a section or a regular page. I could easily identify that straight here from the um, sitemap report. Okay, so that's our sitemap report. And again, this is one that is only available from the admin panel. The next one we're going to look at is our content audit report. And you may have already spotted it earlier on, but we do have our content audit report available here from the content section as well. So I'm gonna click on this here. Again, it's fairly similar. Um, one thing here before we're starting to pull out the parameters, I wanted to just highlight this permission staff that we have here at the top. And this is gonna become important because the content audit report, as we can see, it can be ran from the um, admin panel, but it's also possible uh, for content editors that are not administrators to run this report directly from the site, directly from a specific section or group. And um, before you um, start running these reports or even as you're setting up your internet, it's good to kind of make that decision and think about who do you want to empower to uh, make run these kinds of reports and potentially update content uh, or identify content that needs updating. So as you can see here, this is where you can decide who has permissions to run the content audit report on a section of the internet. Uh, by default, it is only administrators. 
right? Um, but then you can open that up to all, uh, all users that have view and edit permissions on a specific section or a specific security group. So on this internet, we have a specific security group set up for our content editors. It is a uh, group of champions within the organization who um, take care of the internet and make sure all the content is fresh. Not all of them are administrators, but by se selecting this security group, I'm ensuring that if there are areas where they have view and edit permissions, they will be able to run that report. Now, if they do run a report on a section um, or, or an area of the internet where there are other pages in there that they can see that they don't have access to, when they run that report, those pages are going to be excluded. So all of the security permissions that are set on content will still remain intact. I'm gonna save that. And then if I hop back into my first tab here, this is now where I can select what, um, what the extent is of the audit that I want to do here at this point. So um, I'm going to, again, limit uh, for this area here in the sitemap report, I, I had a scope for the full site. Uh, in this area or in this report, I'm going to scope down the report to only the department section, right? So maybe I am, um, I'm at a place where I know that our department's groups have been set up a long time ago. I want to really now do an audit of that content. I want to take a look at all pages that sit within the department section. And I don't really want to look at the structure like I was doing in the sitemap report. In this one, I really want to take a look at, okay, when, when were these pages created? Who has updated them? Has anyone updated them? Right? And if not, who can I talk to, to get them updated? Who's the page owner? And is there even content in there that's not being useful? Maybe content that that nobody's viewing, nobody's liking it. That sort of information is, uh, or those sort of questions are questions that I can answer by running a content audit report. So this is used a lot for people to identify what we call stale content, content that is not being viewed, it's old, it's not updated, it can either be archived or deleted or updated. So with that in mind, we do have a published date range that we can look at. So maybe I'm looking for all of the information in the department's uh, area that is not new, right? I want to look at pages that were um, that were published between um, between maybe two years ago. And today. You don't have to publish a date range. If you leave this blank, it's just going to run the report for all time. Uh, but if you wanted to just look at older content, you can use this here. You can choose whether or not you want to include archived content. Um, it might be a good opportunity to include archived content and just find it through this report so you can delete it if it's very old, uh, or you can select to not include it in the report. And then again, we can now check here what type of contents we want to include. Um, in here, you will see that calendars, events, and news items are included. Uh, typically, when we run an, a content audit report, it might allow us to really find old news items or calendar events that are no longer relevant. Uh, calendar events that have a date of three years in the past, if we can find them through this report, we can then also easily delete them so that they don't clutter up the content on our internet. And then below here, data to include. This is similar to what we saw in the sitemap report. In this case, all four of them are checked. Uh, engagement metrics specifically, of course, is very useful in identifying popular or unpopular or, or stale content. So we definitely want to make sure that we include the number of page views, uh, follows, comments, and those kind of things. So I could export from here as an administrator and we would have, uh, again, a uh, Excel spreadsheet that will land in our inbox. But before I do that, I just want to show how a content editor or somebody who's not an, an administrator may be able to run the same type of report. So I'm going to go out of my admin panel and I'll go into the department section. 
Now, if I am an editor on this page, I'm going to see all of my edit controls, add and edit. And if I open and or expand the page header, I will now see an option here that says audit. If I click on that, it gives me a condensed version of what I just saw in the admin panel. So again, it allows me to export an Excel report with information about any pages within the department section. I can fill out a date range if I like. I can decide whether or not I want to include archived content. And then again, I can choose whether or not I want to include information about security settings and those engagement metrics. Clicking on export, it'll tell me, thank you very much. You will receive an email. And then if I click on that link, it's going to download that report. Of course, in this case, I have already again, downloaded that spreadsheets and put it in a Google spreadsheet over here. And so you'll see that while this report does have similar information compared to what we saw in the sitemap report, it's also quite different. So. We don't have the hierarchy of the content anymore in the front. Instead, we have all of our pages within the department section and they are listed, um, not chronologically, but alphabetically based on the area that they are in. So if I scroll a little bit to the right, you're going to see all of the different types of information that is listed in here. Now, one neat way to maybe use this type of report is first identify stale content, content that hasn't been updated in a long time, right? And you can use the sorting functionality on these columns to kind of find the oldest or the content that was updated the, uh, the, the furthest away in the past. Once you identify pages that you think need to be updated, you can even do a filter by owner. So you can say, okay, you know what? Show me all of the content that Caroline owns, click on OK, and then it's going to get, make it really easy for you to delegate that content update uh, task with your other page owners, sorry, your other content owners, your other champions. Content, <laughs> still content cleanup, um, if it's needed, is, um, is can be a pretty big project. And so any help that you can get from other content owners in the organization will be very welcome. This is a report that you can run as often as you'd like. Of course, typically we definitely encourage that once a year, each content owner will go through the pages they own on the internet and just do a quick review on whether or not that content is still accurate. Is it still relevant? Is it still in the right spot? And does it still need to be owned by that same person or should the page owner be somebody else? Just reviewing those things regularly, make sure that still content and content sprawl don't build up and it just makes that upkeep a whole lot easier on the internet. This was a quick overview of our content reports and thought farmer. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our support team or your customer success manager.